Norman Dowd, from the ODS Church uh, CEF director. Uh, he read my letter and he promised me a response. Uh, he never heard back from him again. Uh, so I used official church channel to seek official answers to my Mormon doubts and concerns. Uh, in 2014, in the fall of 2014, I was approached by my former state president, uh, where he uh, asked to meet me with me. So we had a conversation about what happened, and I uh, asked him questions, seeking clarification from him and official answers to my concerns and questions. I repeatedly asked him to correct me if I'm wrong so that I can publicly correct any inaccurate and false information. Uh, I've asked him this question probably 20, 30 times over the course of the period of the last year and a half. He never answered that, any of those questions once. Uh, yet he attempted three times to hold a disciplinary council for two times tonight with the was the result, um, and uh, I just didn't appreciate how it was treated. Uh, and so after presenting my, after hearing their case and presenting my case, I tried to get answers tonight, um, answers to questions that he told me that he would get, um, there were some mistakes that he would told me that he would give me, and uh, unfortunately that never happened. So three years of no answers from the CES director, and a year and a half of no answers from my state president. And it became really obvious that the church does not have the answers to this LES truth crisis. And um, unfortunately, so after seeing the seeing the King report that I was involved in, that he would not uh, answer my questions, I made the decision to submit my resignation. I'm feeling relieved that it's over. Um, it's been hard dealing with the state president, trying to get answers over and over and over and over. A uh, very frustrating experience. Um, I was just doing what my leaders taught me to seek truth wherever it's found and to seek, seek, seek truth from official uh, sources. I went the official route, the approved route, and the only thing I got out of it was an attempted uh, death communication. So after seeing the kangaroo court that I was involved in and that no questions were going to be answered, I made the decision to preserve my integrity and, and dignity, and I submitted my resignation. Looking around at the uh, crowd that's gathered here, it's sort of become a spokesperson. How do you feel just like seeing this response? Uh, it's pretty crazy to me. I, I never intended the CES letter to be what it what it has become. Um, it really was a document for the CES director to help resolve my Mormon doubts and concerns. And um, in my attempt to to uh, uh, respect the CES director's time. I shared the document with several editors and people to give feedback to before I submitted it to the CES director. They liked the document and they shared it with, shared it with others yeah. and with those, those people shared it with others and created this viral effect. Uh, so once it went viral, it became out of my control basically. And so it's been a really amazing journey. Um, Something that I'm not so sure I would have gone on. It's been extremely hard. Uh, I'm a private person, and so all this publicity is not something that I'm very comfortable with. But it's important and it's worthwhile. Um, the church needs to own up to this truth crisis because real lives, marriages, and families are at stake here. There are individual committing suicide over what the church, some of the church's policies. There are families that are divorcing, marriages that are getting broken up because one of the spouses didn't get the memo about the church essays, they didn't get, didn't get the memo about the church's truth crisis. So all I wanted was honest answers, honest official answers from the church to these real serious problems. And, um, How do you feel like uh, something so personal has really turned into something really 
so public. Um, I think my story is also the story of many, many thousands of others. Um, I think my journey is very similar to theirs, where they love the church and they want to be a part of the church. They want to make the, make the church work. They're not anti-Mormon. They're just people that want to they live the church. And they come across very disturbing church essay verified problems um, with LDS history and doctrine. And they come across this information, these, these information that disturb them. And Mormonism has taught us to be honest, to seek truth wherever it's found. And so we we feel we face we face the decision. Do we want to be honest or do we want to continue to not be honest with ourselves? So a lot of people they want to be honest with themselves and to get to the bottom of these issues. And it just creates this rabbit hole when they find more information, more information. So I think my story resonates with a lot of people because it's very similar to theirs. Um, they came across disturbing information, they tried to resolve their doubts and concerns. They doubted their doubts for a while, only to find out that doesn't work. And so after looking into their doubts, they find that there's a rest of the story. As I told the High Council tonight, I don't know how to repent of the truth. I, I've asked you over and over and over and over a year and a half to correct me where I'm wrong. Wherever there are mistakes or errors, I will probably correct them. I already have an errors page on my website with errors outlined from my original fee yesterday, plus a few more mistakes or errors. I have no problem correcting my work. I have corrected my work. And so I offer them that opportunity to, to seek their help and they refused it, they never answered my question. So again, I don't know how to repent of the truth, and I decided to preserve my dignity by resigning from the church. I no longer want to be a part of an institution that does not value transparency and honesty about this history. And then my final question, um, for people who are watching this tonight on the news, what do you want their big takeaway to be? I just here. Stop doubting your doubts. Cherish your doubts. Explore your doubts. Resolve your doubts. The church, the church needs to be honest about its history. Again, real lives, marriages, and families are impacted by the church's true crisis. And in the information age, in the church essays world that we now live in. We have to face the reality of this new 